Hello. Thank you. I want to welcome all of our audience members to NCSL's Wise Women webinar. As Rachel said, my name is Katie Ziegler. I'm the Program Manager for the Women's Legislative Network of NCSL. I work out of NCSL's Denver, Colorado office. We hope that this meeting today will give the newly elected legislators in the audience some valuable advice and some food for thought from our panel of experienced women from around the country. This meeting today is just a small taste of what NCSL has to offer. We hope that all of you will turn to us often throughout your legislative careers. And our staff here in Denver and in Washington, D.C. are ready and waiting to assist you with information about any of the issues that may arise in your first session. As I said, I'm the staff coordinator for the Women's Legislative Network of NCSL. The mission of the network is to promote the participation, empowerment, and leadership of women legislators. Every woman serving in the 50 states is automatically a member of the network, just as you're automatically a member of NCSL, uh, as are women in the territories and the District of Columbia. The Women's Network is governed by a board of directors that's politically and regionally balanced. We schedule programming and events at NCSL meetings throughout the year that include informational policy briefings, skill building workshops, and informal networking events. So one of the reasons we wanted to produce this webinar is that uh, even today in 2013, next legislative session, women are still a minority in state legislatures around the country. In 1971, the number of women in legislatures around the country was only about 5% of all legislators. Over the next 20 years, women made really dramatic gains in states, and the ratio reached 20% in 1993. And today, in the session that will start in January, women make up about 24% of state legislators nationwide. Approximately 64% of women legislators are Democrats, 36% are Republicans. The map on your screen shows the ratio of women serving in each state. Our website, and there'll be a link at the end of the meeting, has more detailed information about that state-by-state -state breakdown. <coughs> So now it's time to begin our panel discussion, and we will. I will turn it over, first of all, to our first panelist to introduce herself, which is New Hampshire Speaker Terry Norelli. Hi. Welcome, everybody. It's great to be here with you today. I'm Speaker Terry Norelli, a Democrat from New Hampshire, and I'm also honored to be the current president of the National Conference of State Legislatures. Twenty years ago, you would have found me teaching high school math, but for the past 16, I've been roaming the halls of the New Hampshire House along with my 423 part-time colleagues, <laughs> 140 of whom are women. Yep, you did hear me correctly. There are 400 House members here in New Hampshire and 24 senators, and that's part of the reason why I can actually walk my district. It's great to have you with us today. Yes, and good morning. Uh, good Montana morning to you. This is uh, Senator Arnson. Uh, Elsie is my first name, and would do like to be called by Elsie. Anyway, I have served eight years in our House of Representatives. We have 100 members there, and I've been very gracious to be able to uh, do some leadership roles and committees. I've also, uh, looking forward to my first term as Senator, we have uh, four years within that, and there are 50 members of that. I have uh, approximately 28% of the members of 150 in our entire legislature in Montana are women. And what I do uh, when I'm in session every other year, I am an elementary teacher. So I figure if you can teach 10-year-olds, you can definitely do the job <laughs> of, of educating others about the roles of government. But very happy to be with you today. Hi, my name is Sherry Giroux. I serve in... For the state of Colorado, I'm in the House of Representatives, and I am a Republican. I'm halfway through my term as um, a House member. We have term limits, so maximum is eight years, and I've served four of those eight. My background is I'm actually an architect. Um, we, it, it, I haven't really been practicing much because although we are considered a part-time legisla legislature, because of the job that I do in the legislature, it's, it's a full-time job. We have 100 members 
65 in the Senate, 35 in the House. Of those 100 me members, 42 are women. And thank you very much for inviting me. This is a lot of fun. Hi, this is State Senator Amanda McGill from Nebraska. I'm a Democrat, so our legislature is nonpartisan, and it's just a one-house system, so it's very unique. Um, we don't elect leadership through um, parties, and so we do secret ballot, and I am actually a committee chairman, um, thanks to that process, even though I'm very much in the minority in Nebraska. I've been serving for six years, um, 32 years old, so I was elected at a rather young age. Um, after I spent uh, two and a half years as a television reporter. You know, I saw a lot of issues faced in the community that I wanted to be more involved in, and so I ran for office, and here I am. So thank you, and congratulations on your victories that brought you here. Hi, I'm Patty Berg, and I'm going to be um, acting as your moderator today. I represent the great state of California, and I served as a state assemblywoman for six years until I was termed out in 2008. I'm also a Democrat. I uh, have the largest district in outside of Alaska in the nation, representing 480,000 people and six counties and 26 cities. Uh, I'm a social worker and educator by training, and prior to being elected was the CEO for 20 years of a very large nonprofit serving senior citizens. California has a full-time legislature with 120 members representing 39 million residents, 80 in the State Assembly, 40 in the Senate. Currently, we have a total of 31 women, 21 in the Assembly, and 10 in the Senate. And also, for the first time since 1933, Democrats now hold the majority in both houses. And since, 19, since 2010, in partnership with both NCSL and the California State Assembly, I've been providing training to newly elected women members in the California State Legislature. So welcome all of you who are here. And I think onward to our first topic. And our first topic today is, if I knew then what I know now, what would I do differently? And we're going to start that question with Speaker Terry Norelli from New Hampshire. Thanks, Patty. Well, I think probably the single most important thing I wish I had clearly understood then is that there really is no such thing as what many of us refer to as a no-brainer. Um, I think you're out on the campaign trail, and what may have seemed obvious there turns out to have uh, perhaps a lot of nuances once you get a lot more detailed information. And that's one reason I think that it's important not to make too many promises. Uh, was there something that you promised to accomplish when you were out on the campaign trail? Uh, the truth of the matter is you may or may not be able to deliver that, perhaps because your opinion has changed. But even if uh, it is your opinion has stayed the same, even if it's a worthy bill, of course it doesn't necessarily mean that it will become law. So it's important, I think, to keep these things in mind. And if you do, I think you'll find that you'll be sparing with your promises of support before you've heard from all of the sides. Remember, finding out you've spoken too soon could be an unpleasant situation. And also there's this is um, a whole new experience for most of you, and you'll find that things can be a lot more time-consuming than you might think, so be sparing with what you take on. You all come with certain policy experience and uh, life experience, but if you haven't served in the legislature before, you might not be prepared for how your real-life expertise in these areas actually translates to the policymaking arena. So before filing a bill, it's important to know whether it's been filed before, and if so, why didn't it pass? Who are the opponents likely to be, and what will their objections be? That's why, if I knew then, all the people around that could be resources to me, I think I'd have had a whole lot more conversations with them before, before I filed that very first bill. Very good. Senator McGill from Nebraska. That was all excellent advice. Um, you know, the biggest thing is don't be afraid to ask questions. I know there were so many times where I was sitting there with deer and headlights look on my face, 
and um, didn't have a mentor. Um, so seek out a mentor if you can. And so was just trying to figure out what the heck even certain language meant um, when it came to a certain bill. I don't have a – I'm not an attorney. And, and so there were a lot of questions I had in my head, and it took me a while before um, I was willing to admit that I didn't understand some of those things. And people, in, at least in my state, have been very understanding and want to help you understand um, their issues. So just ask questions or find one or two people if you don't want to ask your questions in front of the whole group um, in a hearing or something, but do the follow-up and, uh, and ask those questions so you can better understand the situation. Um, other than that, I mean, we're going to talk about this a little later, but just the overall importance of building relationships and taking the time to truly know your colleagues and know what makes them think and to observe their body language and, and all of that is just so critical to being successful um, that, you know, I wish I would have spent a little more time at the very beginning doing those things. So those are my two cents for now. Great. Thank you. Um, Senator Arnston. Thank you. I'm going to go on a little bit more personal note. Take care of yourself, ladies. I mean, it is very crucial. You're going to be in a whole new environment with all kinds of individuals from different lifestyles and that. Keep your hands sanitized. Use the stairs. It is a sedentary lifestyle for a while, and you may, um, you may not be part of that. But get up, walk around, and uh, keep your hands clean. Sleep. Time is probably going to be your biggest enemy of anything, and I know you're going to be burning candles at both ends. So it's very important that you try to eat right. Huh? Those meatballs and cheese cubes and everything else that I know we've all experienced, um, put some vegetables in with that as well. So number one is you. You are who have been elected to this office. Um, time is going to be crucial. Take care of yourself. Thank you. Um, Representative Giroux from Colorado. Thank you. Um, I, I, everything that's been said is wonderful, and I, I think it all builds on a, a very good start in the legislature. I, I think if I were to give you two things that would help me, I would have engaged faster. It would be if I had trusted the process better. And by doing that, I mean when you go through your um, your orientation, it, it feels a little bit like you're drinking out of a fire hose because there's so much information. And if you don't have a background in law the way many of us don't, it, it can be overwhelming. But if you trust the process, I think it helps you engage in the information you're given. It'll also help you absorb it better. And don't be afraid just to dig in and um, take the time to read through your rule book. Uh, the rules of your body are the best and biggest key to your success on the floor. If you understand the rules, and quite honestly, I've found that many of my colleagues don't understand the rules, but if you understand those rules, it'll seem much easier to negotiate through the process. The other the other um, point that I would like to make is trusting your co colleagues on both sides of the aisle. If you've gone through a really tough election process, and if, and if it was adversarial, you can come in with a fairly negative opinion of those that you serve with on the other side of the aisle. If you can try to put that to the side, it can, if you can look at them as people and not look at affiliations, I think you're going to be better in channeling yourself to deal with people as people rather than as parties. I found the best work that I do is when I reach across the aisle and the problem solving that we do together as a group is far, far better than when you problem solve just from one viewpoint. Very good. And I would just add, this is Patty Berg again, I would have kept a journal. I would have kept a journal every day that I was in session for all the six years I was there. I would have spent more time with the third house outside of my office and I would have been become active in NCL at the onset um, because I didn't get involved with NCL until much later, and I would have gotten involved right at the beginning. It's a great networking opportunity and a great learning opportunity. I also, uh, because California is so different than so many other legislatures, I would have walked in my first year contributing up front beneath my caucus because that's how it's played in the state of California. So let's move on to topic two. Um, topic two 
is finding success in your first term. What are the key ingredients, and where do you focus? We'll start with Senator McGill from Nebraska. Thank you. Um, when I was first elected, I'll be honest that I was very overwhelmed, and how many bills should I introduce, and what issues really matter the most to me, and I'm prepared to introduce a bill on so quickly after an election. And, and I found it to be very useful to just introduce four bills um, because then um, I didn't get too overwhelmed and I could do what I think is the second most important thing, which is to just stop and listen and observe the process. Um, I think I earned a lot of respect from my colleagues by not getting up and firing my guns full blaze, you know, coming into the legislature, but sitting and learning from the senior members and watching the etiquette, watching how they interact with each other. Um, and I've seen other people make the mistake of coming in and, and putting their foot in their mouth um, too quickly. So just picking a limited number of bills that were Im important to me, sitting and watching and listening and learning um, were just very critical for me. And then, sure enough, in that second year, I finally was able to identify what my true passion um, in the legislature is, which is children's mental health, you know, and, and if you don't have it coming in, you will find it. Some issue will speak to you, but leave yourself open to, you know, have those different experiences and to, to learn along the way and to learn from your senior members. Thank you. And Senator Elsie from yes. Montana. Yes, for sure. Number one thing I do believe is the key ingredient is to be congenial to all. And that that means people, of course, within your caucus. But it's the people across the aisle that are also, in my state, are Montanans. And being being congenial to all means uh, getting a cup of coffee with them, uh, saying hello to them, asking how, you know, their holiday was or their Christmas was or what their future plans are, or do talk about the bills that they might be carrying. You also have to include your staff. Staff is extremely important. They're the ones that are going to help you navigate that process in the very beginning. Um, your body clues are extremely important. Rolling the eyes and sign and all those kind of things can even be more poignant than words. Patience with the process, please be patient. Um, as I had shared earlier, time is of the essence. But if you're patient, you'll be able to watch and get other clues around you that's going to lead to your success. That's great. Representative Giro. Thank you. Um, these are really great ideas. For me, I think... And I was fortunate in the fact that I, I knew my focus of interest when I started in the legislature. I've always been interested in, in numbers, and I'm more of a policy person than a political person. So for me, I put myself on a path early on of the finance. I, I chaired the Joint Budget Committee in my third, in my fourth year in um, office, and and I actually didn't realize it, but when I started chairing it from the House, I I I um became the first woman in the, in the Colorado House to chair the Joint Budget Committee. That wasn't my intent, but if you find your focus, it's amazing how quickly you can drill down and be more successful. Doing your homework, reading your bills before committee hearings, you can, you'll be able to quickly tell who the individual members are of, of your committees that don't read their bills before they get there. I believe it's a disservice to the public. I believe it's a disservice to your colleagues if you don't go educated and um, um, prepared before you go to committee hearings. I know it gets really busy, but you need to make sure you remember that that is your primary purpose to be there. Um, and, and by doing that, you show respect for the public. You're a servant to your um, district. And if you keep in mind that you are a servant of the people, I think it helps balance that. Um, you'll, you'll notice at times there you'll have colleagues that sometimes lose perspective as to why they're there. Um, you're really there for the people of your state. You're not there for yourself. And if you keep that in mind, I think it, you get along better with people. You're, the integrity will build, and um, I think you'll have a better perspective of why you're, why you're there and the work that you have to do before you. Very good. Speaker Norelli. Hi. I think it's important um, to take things slowly and to focus on the basics first. And uh, somebody already mentioned what I think is the very first basic, and that's definitely the rules. 
you know, we don't start to play some game that we haven't played before without reading the rules first. And certainly here, knowing the rules is essential to your success because they can either stop you in your tracks or you can understand them and use them to your advantage. I know I was uh, taught that by um, a member, a long-term member of the house when I first came, somebody from the other side of the aisle, so to reiterate that building bridges across the aisle. And um, I think it has really uh, been very good, been very helpful over the years. Um, And I want to reiterate about being a good committee member because the committees are where you'll develop uh, your expertise. So become an expert. As Senator Giroux said, start by thoroughly preparing yourself for your committee. And in in addition to reading the bills and uh, making sure that you have an understanding of the issue, you might also want to take a look at the underlying statutes in advance as well. As you're in your committee and elsewhere, it's helpful to observe the more experienced members of your committee very carefully. Uh, As a former teacher, I'll say it's sort of like student teaching. You know, you go in and you observe the other teachers, and some of them you will want to emulate, and others will be models to remind me perhaps what you shouldn't do. So take note of what works and what seems not to be as effective. Um, You're in a totally new place, and one of the basics is figuring out who all the players are, not just your committee members, but the pertinent staff, uh, agency employees if they're involved, uh, lobbyists, members from the other chamber who maybe sit on on the committee that deals with the same issues, uh, interested parties in that policy area, Um, and I would add to that the go-to person uh, in your leadership that, uh, when it comes to that issue. You, that way you can get a really good reputation as an effective and useful committee member, develop your expertise in that area, and then you'll be able to expand your repertoire from there. Get to be known as someone who keeps their word and someone who can be relied on to follow through on tasks. Um, And I would just uh, echo that it really does help start out by focusing on only one or two policy areas. That way you'll avoid spreading yourself too thin so you can take care of yourself, as Elsie suggested, and you'll become known as a go-to person on those issues. I think that's all excellent advice. I would would just add, this is Patty Berg again, I would just add... um, I would start building on constituent services right away, and one of the ways you can do that is creating, like, kitchen cabinets within your district, people you can get input from and also run ideas by. Um, I think it's very important to understand what the key ingredients of sound public policy are, so when bills you're reviewing bills in committee, you know when a bill is ready to go out or not. Um, I think you want to build a reputation as a hard worker, um, I also agree trying to become an expert in at least one defining area so you you are the go-to person. Um, spending time um, on uh, the other house's floor uh, from the one that you're already in uh, because those those your bills are going to go over there as well, and um, you're going to want to know the people on the other uh, over on the other at the other chamber. Um, Networking with colleagues and building trust is extremely important. Being discreet, uh, because honesty and integrity are the currency of politics, and you want to be known that way. Um, And um, you want to build a reputation as a hard worker. And I would just, that's that's what I would add. Um, And now we'll move on to topic three, which is the importance of building relationships. So, ladies, how did you build relationships, starting with Senator Elsie? Thank you, Patty. Wow. I think the number one thing is, and we've already talked about this, is your reputation. So when you go in, people may know a little bit about you, but it's your actions that are going to go ahead and speak even louder. So your work ethic that you bring to the table after your campaign and everything else 
you need to follow through with what you say, and how you how you say that is even more important. Um, well, one uh, very wise legislator said to me, you know, loose lips sink ships, which is uh, a way to say listen more rather than speaking. Words have a lot of weight. So be very, very careful with those words. Um, your personality is going to be shining through on all kinds, like I had shared before. Time is going to be an enemy, and you're going to be tired. So it's it's very important that you um, think more than what you when you would rather than speaking. Um, don't be afraid, though, of opening a door that you may not have ever opened before, a policy issue that you may not have had come up in your constituency area. Um, all things, listening is one of the biggest things that you can ever do. And if you're an active listener, that means you put your technology down, you put your iPad down, you put all that down, and you look at these people um, that are have been elected as well, or if they're a lobbyist that bring information to the table, or they're a staffer, look at them. These, it's very, very important because you're in the world of people. Technology is going to transfer the information that you gather and that goes through in your body, but it is very, very important that that personal um, attachment um, occurs, and especially right up front. Great. Uh, Representative DeRoe from Colorado. Thank you. Those are really good ideas. I, uh, When I approach the, the beginning of my um, time in office, one of the things that I was most concerned about is with those relationships, how I related to those individuals. And I, the one night I sat down and Googled uh, Myers-Briggs on the computer, and oh, I took the Myers-Briggs personality profile. And I did it not because I think what, by the time you run for office, you have a pretty good idea of what your ideals are, but sometimes we don't know who we are and how we react to people. And I find knowing the type of person that I am, and in my case, I'm an introvert, that helped me understand how I relate to other people on the floor. Um, I joke with uh, colleagues in the Colorado House. Uh, I tell them this is the largest, most dysfunctional family I've ever been a part of. <laughs> and it's also, when you go to the floor of the House, where we have our 65 members, it really is junior high on steroids, because you can see all the different personality types as you're sitting there on the floor watching the conversation. So understanding who you are helps you relate to other people. So, you know, in a lot of cases, people aren't trying to be negative towards you. It could just be the way you process those relationships or those people. So um, knowing yourself is, is very helpful. And, and it also, quite honestly, takes a lot of the pressure off because one of the things that uh, you find is when you – first begin in office, you put a lot of pressure on yourself. And, and the whole idea of taking care of yourself physically is very good, but you need to take care of yourself emotionally as well. Great. Uh, Speaker Norelli. Well, I'm sure wishing that I had been on this call when I first came into the <laughs> legislature. <laughs> right. So uh, I'd say talk to everybody. Uh, be pleasant to everyone. Uh, one thing you really need to remember is that your opponent on one issue might very well be your ally on another one. Uh, I think someone mentioned before how important listening is. So remember, listen a lot more than you talk. I'd keep in mind, too, that um, it's important not to take yourself too seriously, even all the while that you're taking the work that you're doing very seriously. So if you truly listen to everybody's perspective without rushing to judgment, if you're respectful of others and you don't gossip, uh, you keep confidences, if folks can depend on you for your integrity and your dependability, you'll be building all the bridges that you need. And those relationships are what will make things work for you in politics. And you can start by building relationships with other members of your committee. Again, don't forget, be sure to include members of both parties. If you're a House member, get to know your state senator or vice versa. If you're interested in a particular issue, start building some bridges with the go-to members on that issue. You can ask them for advice. 
ask more experienced legislators about the history of whatever issue you happen to be working on. It will help you avoid pitfalls. It will certainly avoid wasting other people's time. And you will also figure out from the conversation who may be an ally and who may not, but all the while you are getting to know people, building those ever-important relationships. Figure Very out good, early ladies. who the key effective legislators are, get to know them, learn what makes them effective. And um, don't forget that things can get pretty hectic, particularly at certain times of the legislative calendar. So make sure, again, you're taking care of yourself and you're just having time to just converse with people, grab lunch or a cup of coffee and get those relationships going. Very good. Senator McGill. Um, everything every, all the other women have said is spot on. Um, I would throw in to, you know, you're about to get overwhelmed, probably already overwhelmed by invitations to a lot of events. And it's important to try to find balance between what you go to and what you don't and finding time for yourself. But do make sure to go to some, um, not just to meet constituents and those interested parties, but to spend time with your colleagues outside of the legislative structure. I know that's where a lot of, like, side discussions end up happening is at events and, you know, as people are having cocktails. And, and so it is important to go to some events, mingle with your colleagues in that more informal atmosphere. I know in my legislature we do occasional karaoke nights together. Um, so things that allow us to bond and build true friendships and get to know each other um, outside of that formal structure is really important. And then, um, much like was talked about earlier in trying to figure out yourself, um, I have just one additional thing to say to that. Just, yeah, try to figure out what that ad adjective is that you want to be described as. I mean, for me coming in um, and I was being faced with tough decisions, I decided I wanted to be as genuine a person as I could be and as genuine to, you know, my feelings and beliefs. And I, I never said that out loud to people, but um, as our outgoing speaker was leaving this spring and was making comments about every person in the body, he actually used the word, you know, Senator McGill is one of the most genuine people I know. Uh, and so clearly I was successful in that somehow by, you know, picking what it is I want to be as a legislator and then trying to be that. And whether um, it's being that hard worker or having, you know, character or whatever that adjective is, you know, think of think about who you want to be and, and how you can live that. Very good. These are all pearls, ladies. I hope you're you're taking copious notes. Um, I would add, um, again, networking with colleagues in both houses because it's everything is built around trust. Um, I would also add co-sponsoring bills with a member of the opposite party who shares a similar constituent concern. Um, that. Is um, that it really helps in terms of building relationships? I started in 2006 a girlfriend's dinner every Tuesday night. We would all the women uh, from our women's caucus would be invited, bipartisan, invited to dinner where we could just network and talk. And that is still going on in 2013. So this is that's I mean it's just socializing and it was wonderful. Um, I would also add getting to know committee staff as well as administration staff, the administration staff that's going to be advising the governor on whether they sign or don't sign your bills at the end. Uh, I would meet personally with policy and budget committee chairs, which I did in both houses to educate them on, on my most significant bills because the committee chairs are the ones that are going to be hearing your bills. Um, I also was big on attending colleagues' fundraisers. Um, we've talked before about a mentor, but I would say when selecting a mentor, you want to look at someone who has a reputation of being strategic, successful, and respected, and has at least four, at least four years under their belt in the legislature. So now moving on to topic four, the balancing act, a very difficult one legislature, work, personal life. Um, you know, in California, I had to have a residence both at the Capitol as well as in the district. 
And then how do you schedule time between work, home, and having a personal life? So how did you all attain balance, starting with Representative Duro? Uh, thank you. Um, I live about 20, 28 miles from the Capitol, so I'm able to go home every night. Mm. Um, but in the legislature, you know, your hours are longer, so sometimes I'm, I don't get home until... 11 o'clock at night if we have a, a hearing go long. There was one hearing that started at 10 in the morning and didn't finish until 2.30 in the morning the next day. So being being aware that those hours, what you conceived as an 8 to 5 job in, in your other life is not what you have now. Um, so being prepared for that helps. Making sure your your spouse is prepared for that. Um, if you have children, I my children are grown and gone, um, but if you have children, you need to make sure you've got support to help keep schedules. Taking care of your spouse during the course of the of the session is very important. My, my cue for my husband is when he tells me he misses me, that's when I know um, it's time for me to give a little bit of help to him because he's feeling overwhelmed. You're feeling overwhelmed, but you have to fight that um, that desire to make it all about you. You really need to look at the fact that not only are you giving as a public service servant, but so is your family, and being aware of what they're having to do. Um, I I spend a lot of time cleaning on weekends. I spend a lot of time cooking on weekends, so that there's some semblance of a of a normal family life during the week for my husband. I don't my husband doesn't cook and so if I don't prepare it he's not going to eat it and and understand that even sometimes despite your best efforts it's not going to be exactly the way it was when you weren't involved like this um during session peanut butter becomes a food group for my husband <laughs> and I fight that all the time but the day-to-day -day life realities are are a struggle you're not alone in it but be prepared thank you uh speaker Norelli Thanks, and I uh, certainly would echo your shout-out to the spouses and families at home who uh, are supporting us while we're doing this uh, important work. Um, I think that's one of the reasons why it's really important to really be clear about what your priorities are and always, always to keep them right in sight. Things can get very busy very fast. And if you're spending time doing a lot of things that don't relate to your priorities, and by the way, I will just say that your priorities might include just having some fun. That's okay. But if what you're doing is spending a lot of time and it's not addressing your priorities, then chances are you're overcommitting yourself. So be ferocious about guarding your personal time. And be creative about how you use your time. Uh, one of the things that I used to like to do um, before uh, I was in the legislature, certainly before I was speaker, was to read novels. But you might have figured out already that I don't have a whole lot of time to do that these days. But I do commute back and forth to the State House. So I've, for the last several years, I've been listening to audiobooks on my drive. Of course, for some of my colleagues, the drive is a perfect time for them to try to decompress and r use that as some reflection time. Or for others, it's the perfect time for them to start getting things organized in their mind or trying to switch gears from the state house uh, to the home house. Um, I also like to travel. Not only do I like big travel, but I also like this little getaway weekend. And one of the ways I've found out to have little getaway weekends is attend an NCSL conference. Um, you have fun. You go someplace else. You meet some new people. You learn something, and it and it re-energizes you a little bit to come back and continue the work you're doing at the state house. If you have kids at home, and I did when I first started, um, think about ways to share what you're doing with them. Either bring them to the state house for a visit sometime that's appropriate or bring the state house to their classroom. But make sure that uh, their life, your life here at the state house are connected in some way. And I think that uh, Sherry sort of alluded to this as well, but don't forget date night. I think that's really important. 
And I would lastly say it's worth repeating that um, you really need to know and be clear about what your priorities are and keep them in sight. Delegate what you can. Say no to what's not important. Take time for yourself. And most definitely, somebody mentioned this before, but most definitely get enough sleep. And good diet, right? Oh, absolutely. (laughs) Not peanut butter as the food group. (laughs) Um, Senator McGill. Yes. um, uh, Much along what they were saying with uh, um, sleep, I am not a morning person, and I'm not afraid to admit it, and I found that if I was having to get up too early for meetings or breakfast, it would make me cranky during the day. And so I'm somebody who would rather take meetings over lunch or dinner or even during the the legislative day. And so for me, that's a protected time where there's a certain point in the morning where I tell my staff nothing before this particular time. Um, So learning yourself and how you are at your best and working your schedule around that. Um, I was, like I think I said earlier, 26 when I was first elected, so I was single, and I'm still not married. Um, I have a great boyfriend right now, but I didn't find him until a year ago. And so if any of you are young and single, that is a real challenge um, to be in the legislature. And if you do want to find Mr. Wright, um, taking the time to try to figure out who – who legitimately is interested in you or who only likes you because of this image they see on TV. And so, um, you know, one thing that I did learn is I had to make going out and meeting people a priority uh, in my life because he, Mr. Wright wasn't just going to come to me. Um, so if that's something that's on your mind, it is very difficult, um, but something you have to make a priority if you are going to do that. I know I want to have a family and have kids, and so it was something that I chose to make a priority. Um, and then I, I'm a young professional, so I have to have a job as well as be in the legislature, and sometimes that means during legislative days having to be on my iPhone or leave a hearing to go deal with something. But it, it's a tough reality that, you know, in many of our states we don't make enough to live off of. And so um, trying to find that balance and trying to make sure the legislature stays friendly to working professionals um, because there are so many of us out there and, um, you know, give your attention and be a good listener as much as possible. But I, there, it's just a reality that I also, many of us in my legislature have to work a little bit during the days as well. And it's a difficult balance, but being in the legislature is 100% worth it. Um, for all the great things you can do. So, you know, there are ways to make it work. Thank you. Um, Senator Elsie. Thank you. Well, I live about 250 miles from my state house, and I can't get there on a four-wheeler, so it takes me quite a long time to travel. So you set up another home. Set up another in home means that, you know, if you you pack things. So you really have to be proactive in what you're doing with things. You have to organize. Um, You have to put a lot more thought into it just in a a rather day when you get up and you get dressed and then you head off to work. It's a whole lot different than that. So give yourself a little bit more leeway on the front end. It will all work out on the end. As a worker myself, I'm still teaching 22 years into this. I teach half a year, and so I prepare my class and my children and myself that I know that I'm going to be leaving within half of the year's time is done. That means I do a lot of power teaching within, and and it's challenging knowing that I'm going to leave my place of business and then going to work using the same work ethic that I have, and then trying to keep bases with that. So during the day, you must set aside some time that's just for that work time. Again, you are elected to do states and people's business. That comes first and foremost. So you have to get up early. You have to go to bed late. You have to set that up within it. The biggest thing that I can say, though, is when you do set up your calendar, however you do it, you make sure you own the calendar. Nobody else does that. You know your body. You know your limitations. Make sure that that is up front with who you are at first because you're going to get pulled in so many different directions. I also have an aged father that I take care of, so I prepare an awful lot of meals ahead of time. And as he's been getting older since I've been in the legislature, I've had to spend more time with him. 
it's not so much more time, I guess I would say, it's quality of time. And you're going to find that with your um, with your with your own family. One thing that I do do with members of my caucus and, and members that are in the legislature with me, I always say, have you sent your wife flowers? Have you called home to your children? Just to make sure, because you can get so buried with all kinds of wonderful issues and things that are important. But the number one thing is to take care of your family. I think that's really true. And I can tell you what I hear most commonly from former women legislators in California is that family does come first or you pay a heavy price later. And I have to say in California, in the six years that I served, we had 13 divorces, and those were women um, who were um, divorced from their husbands. And I think it, it's the whole balancing act is so, um, it's so much more difficult for women than it is for men because men have usually a wife at home that takes care of everything. And women don't necessarily have a husband at home that can take care of everything because they're trying to do it all. And I can say, honestly, I don't think I ever um, attained balance during my years in the legislature. I mentioned earlier I had 480,000 constituents, six counties to cover, and 26 cities. So I only slept in my, on my own, in my own bed uh, in, in the district four nights out of 30. Otherwise, I was in the district or I was in Sacramento. It just, that's, what, that's what the job was for me. Um, and I also appreciate that, especially in part-time legislatures, you you know, there's difficulty in terms of not having adequate staffing. And so and it's difficult when you don't have staff to represent you at events that ordinarily you might be able to do if you're a legislat- in a legislature with a lot of staff, especially in districts, especially in the district, because you have to learn to say no to attending events, no to family and friends. Um, I mean, it just is no is part of what you have to learn to balance. Um, so that's what I would finish it up with. And for that, I think, are we ready to turn it over to Q&A, Katie? Yes, this is Katie Ziegler. Again, thank you very much to all of you for your comments. Lots of great pearls of wisdom, as Patty said. Those on the line listening, you can submit a question via the chat function on the right side of your screen. We'll be seeing those here at NCSL and can share them with our panel. But to start things off, maybe while people are typing, uh, let's take put it back out there to, to our panelists, our five panelists, including Patty, and ask the question, what keeps you awake at night, whether you're at home or out in the district or at the Capitol? What are, what are those things that... Uh, that might keep you tossing and turning. And I think we'll um, start back out with Speaker Norelli to, to start us off, and then if anyone else would like to chime in, please do so afterwards. Speaker Norelli, are you there? Sorry, I had it on mute. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I was, talking to, I was talking to myself, everyone. Um, <laughs> Well, when I was when I was first in the legislature, my kids were still young, and I think it was always about you know how I was managing everything for them, particularly because my husband's job requires that he travels uh, several days every week. So the you know single parenting and being away, not local, um, can be distressing sometimes if your kids aren't doing well. Um, now, uh, and for many of you in l- much larger districts, or um, the press coverage can be very challenging at times. Um, sometimes you do something, maybe you just don't get the message out right, or for whatever reason, um, you know, the press isn't what you had hoped it would be. And I think for women, that's a lot harder it's a lot harder not to take that personally um, than it is for men. And that can sure keep you uh, awake at night. Just keep in mind, keep doing what you think is the right thing to do. 
And if it was a messaging problem, work on the message. Very good. Who else wants to jump in on that one? What about Representative Giro? Um, well, and that's that's a very those are really good comments. I think some of the uh, one of the frustrations I had was when I was first elected, I was told it was a part time position, and in reality, um, although we serve part time, serving your district is by and large has been a full time position for me. So coming to that balance with my 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 real job um, in the architectural. Pro- profession, it's very difficult for me to actually manage projects for people because I don't control my life anymore. My public service controls my life. So finding that balance of of determining, well, instead of managing projects, I can start marketing for my office and and finding that. Um, Having gone through the recession the way we have, understanding that um, you do have an obligation to your second job and... um, Understanding how much of that obligation I need to give it can keep me up the other The other challenge for me has been that in working with my leadership, although in Colorado we write the the budget the governor doesn't uh, the legislature does so making sure I manage the ask of leadership um, and ma- making sure that I'm able to um, clearly explain to them the dynamics of the budgeting process. Um, because most people in the legislature don't understand the numbers. That's it's, it's, Most people focus on their specific interest areas. So making sure that I'm, I'm clear about what I'm trying to explain to people, sometimes that's been my biggest frustration is that, um, you know, you can explain something to somebody, but because you're you're not in three dimensions, you're just talking to somebody, you don't always portray the the right picture and making sure that I do that is is always a challenge. That's, thank, that's thank very you. wise, very wise. Very, you know, th- this is Katie with NCSL. Um, we can maybe circle back to the what keeps you up at night again in a moment, but we, we do have another question. Uh, getting back to that question of relationships and finding a mentor, uh, a more senior member that you can both observe and learn from, ask someone who you can ask questions, bounce ideas off of. We've been asked, you know, the nuts and bolts of how do you find that person? And should you just ask them, will you be my mentor? Or is it more subtle than that? Could uh, maybe one or two of our panelists, if you'd like to speak to that? And just, just jump in if you, if you would like to answer that question, please. I'll start. This is Sherry Giroux again. I'll just start very quickly. In in the Colorado House, we um, leadership assigns mentors to each of the members, the new freshmen that come in, and they do it sometimes based on geography. They can do it sometimes based on what their political um, viewpoints are. I mean, you know, both parties are they're big tents, so. Um, uh, you know, a Republican, you may be more moderate, you may be more conservative. I think looking at that has been very helpful. But basically having them assigned takes the pressure off of an individual asking. I, on the other hand, this is Patty Berg, on the other hand, did, I I sought out a couple of people, um, one male and one female, and I asked them to be my mentor, and I knew their reputation going in, and they were more than willing to mentor me. That was really um, that was really great, and they they were long term serving members. I mean, as long term as you can be in California, but were thought of as strategic, successful, and they were respected. They were respected on both sides of the aisle. And um, but the interesting thing is that when I created the first training program for women in 2010, I had. I recruited 51 former and current women members to participate, either as faculty or as mentors. And I had 16 different areas that women could sign up to mentor in. And there were uh, 30 former, just the former members, not current members, but 30 former members that agreed to mentor around 16 areas. The interesting thing is that no, none of the new members availed themselves to any of those mentors, and which was a great disappointment to me because I thought it was such a fabulous opportunity. So you really, yeah, I think you need to be aggressive, especially in states that don't assign mentors. 
And Patty, I would this is Speaker Norelli, I would add that mentoring can happen in a very formalized way or a very informal way. Right. And and you can look for mentors in lots of places. Um, certainly if it's formal seeking out assistance from your leadership is uh one way, but in informally you know, you get to know some of the experienced members on your committee because you spend a lot of time in your committee. Mm-hmm. Um, ask them for help on a case-by-case basis when you need it. Mm-hmm. If you're uh, wherever you sit on the House or Senate floor, there are some members around you. You can start to talk to them and ask for uh, help on a on an individual basis there. If you participate in an issue caucus, Uh, then there might be somebody that has an interest in the same policy area as you do that you can ask for help uh, from them. And so I think the more people you maybe ask one or two questions here or there, you start to get a sense of um, whose advice you are more likely to take, who's who's been giving you advice that you like, um, and who's willing to give you the advice, and I think eventually you'll find that you're asking that person more often um, without ever having to even set up a very formalized process. Excellent. This is Katie. We're reaching the end of our hour, and so I want to just make sure that each of our panelists, if you have any final words that you'd like to share, either on the question of mentoring, what keeps you awake, or... Any other advice for our audience, I'm going to um, turn it over and start with Senator McGill. Um, You're in for the ride of your life. It's so fabulous to be a part of democracy and lawmaking. Um, You're going to have a great time. Um, In terms of what keeps me up at night, just know that no matter how sick your skin is, you're going to hurt sometimes, and you will have trouble sleeping occasionally. But tomorrow is a new day, and it always gets better. And, you know, there are times I'm incredibly disappointed by some of my colleagues or a vote. But three days later, I'm back on top of the world on something else. So things ebb and flow. You'll get through it and enjoy it along the way. And I would just add not to take it personally. I mean, this is you're in a profession. You can't take things personally. And um, which I think is a which I think is a really important thing. And the other thing I would say is don't fall in love with any of your little bills. Don't fall in <laughs> love with the bills. Thank that you. Was, that was a quote from Speaker Willie Brown. Very good. Mm-hmm. Let's go to Senator Ernst in Montana. Wow, I am so excited that uh, I'm part of this, and I want to thank everybody on on this part of it. And uh, everything that you've heard today, you know, you're probably going to, it's going to flow in and flow out. You're going to find a balance yourself because you know yourself. You are mature women, and you've come from all walks of life. Every single one of those is a gift that you're going to be giving. Um, also, the the one other thing that I need to say is when, when you have a bill, you may think it's the best bill ever, but there's opposition to that. So when you um, sleep at night, think about, well, maybe this isn't the best. What is it that I can make it better? Legislation can, for your state can always be better. And if you if you go into it looking that you can make something better, it, of course, will come. But thank you for this participation. Thank you. Uh, Representative Giro, Colorado. Um, thank you. I, two things I can think of. Um, the first is when you get an opportunity to speak to school children in your district, take it. The work that you do and the impact that you have on the future of not only your state but of the country and and helping them understand the 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 legislative process and and how the state is governed can be one of the best the greatest blessings we are given. The second thing I've enjoyed is um in Colorado we don't we have um staff only during session. I enjoy finding the young people who are excited about the political process who want to be a part of the political process and helping give them that leg up. Um, introducing them to as many people as I can. I always take my staff members to bill signings so that they have an opportunity to shake the governor's hand. Um, I, I try to include them as much as I possibly can because actually I feel that's part of my job is to to pay it forward, and um, it, it can be the most rewarding. Thank you. Speaker Norelli. 
Well, I want to say, uh, Katie, and to everyone, thanks to NCSL for uh, offering this opportunity for new women legislators. And so I just want to take a minute to tell you all just what you can get from NCSL. Um, we are a bipartisan organization, and we're here to improve the quality and effectiveness of state legislatures, to promote policy innovation and communication among legislatures, and also to ensure that legislatures have a strong and cohesive voice in the federal system. NCSL is your organization, so turn to NCSL when you need help. You will receive, if you aren't already, a daily e-newsletter that will keep you up to date on what's happening in legislatures around the country and tell you about NCSL's newest publications, research, meetings, and even more webinars. You'll also receive the award-winning State Legislatures Magazine and uh, also some concise policy briefs called Legis Briefs. In, you can discover in just five easy steps, all the resources that NCSL has at your fingertips. All you need to do is go to visit, is visit ncsl.org and check out member services under the menu dropdown about us. And then when January comes, you'll, be, you'll know all about the new webinars that uh, we'll be hosting that will give you a rundown of the top 10 issues in state legislatures. And most important of all, mark your calendars. August 12th to 15th in Atlanta is our big annual legislative summit. So I hope to see you there and hope you get to join us on a lot more webinars. Very good. Wonderful. Very good, Ms. Speaker. <laughs> Patty, do you have any final words? Well, I just really appreciate having had the opportunity and um, to, you know, deal with this wonderful panel. And and I think that the um, pearls of wisdom that um, were articulated were very good from these very wise women. And um, I think our our uh, email addresses are also were also posted. And I want anybody out there. To feel free certainly to contact me with any questions, and I'm sure the other ladies would agree to to contact them if you have any additional follow up you would um, you would like to ask. Wonderful, thank you. This is Katie with NCSL, and I want to just say a final thank you to all five of our panelists for your participation. This webinar will be archived. It's been recorded, so to speak, and it will be up on our website shortly. And so please do let your colleagues know about this, uh, that th this is a resource that will live on and people can go back and listen to it and get this advice. And I just want to reiterate, call on NCSL anytime, and thank you very much. <laughs>